Hey everybody, Steve Colescott here for EliteFTS.com and we are with IPB Pro Zach Khan mm -hmm. and IFBB, IFBB Pro Mark Dugdale and uh, they came out, we did a, a Nutrex photo shoot today uh, they just finished that up, we're going to talk to them a little bit about, uh, about nutrition training and kind of introduce them to you. So let's start out with you Zach, uh, how long have you been training? Uh, I've been competitive bodybuilding for uh, 10 years now and before that my background was from uh, boxing and you know just basically just any athletic background you know what I mean so from being a sprinter to going into boxing where I got injured and basically did some rehab physio so I had to do some weight training and that's what led me into bodybuilding. Okay. Yeah so and, and tell, tell people a little bit about your bodybuilding career, how you climbed up. Yeah, basically, once I started bodybuilding, it was quite a young age, 20 years old, and I, I did the local shows, what the, the gym owner ran, and basically he said to me that I've got good potential, I should enter the show, and I didn't really think that I was cut out for this bodybuilding game, but since he, you know, they give me the push into that area and said do it and let's see how you do, you know what I mean? And basically at that time I was quite, you know, I was a student and I couldn't afford to go to the gym all the time and he says to me, if you do well, I'll give you free membership so you can train here all the time as long as you represent the gym and I thought, well, why not, you know, that saves me a lot of money with gym membership and I entered the first show and I won that and basically from there was no looking back and and I got my motivation from you know reading Flex magazines and seeing the old school bodybuilders like Flex, Dorian, you know, and you know Arnold of course and Lou Ferrino and all these guys and they had the charisma and basically that's what I wanted to be, you know. I wanted to have that charisma, I wanted to have that lifestyle where everything in life you know you love doing and wake up every morning to something you, you love doing and having a job and a hobby, your job is your hobby, is the perfect career to be in. And you know, from, I never really thought I would fall into, you know, being an IFBB Pro, I never thought once it's gonna, uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know what IFBB Pro was then, tell you truthfully, until, you know, the more competitions I did and the higher level I got, uh, basically I realized there was, you know, the British finals and if you won the British finals, you get a pro card then that allows you to compete with the other IFBBs around the world. Because in the UK we didn't have no professional shows, so for me winning the British Nationals, yeah, from there it just opened up the you know, door for me and, and Nutrex saw me and uh, saw me in a magazine and basically uh, was sitting and offered me a sponsorship to be a part of the team. And they was, uh, they was there for me through thick and thin and um, especially through the injuries I had, mm -hmm. that, like one year after my pro card, um, basically I was hack squatting and I had an accident where I tore both of my quadricep tendons off my kneecap and I was out of the game for a while, you know, couldn't train, couldn't do nothing and uh, basically just stood by me, so I've got to respect, uh, you know, new tricks for having my back up to this day. Mm -hmm. And basically now I'm at that point where I'm, I'm recovered, I'm recovering well and everything, so I'm just uh, looking at a show to compete, okay. so um, see what happens with the gains I've put on. And, so. and you're one of the big, the bigger guys out there, what is your, your height and value weight? I'm 5'11", 300 pounds. Okay, 300 yeah. pounds off season, 300 pounds at a show? No, no, it's off season, 300 okay. pounds. Okay, and, yeah. and what do you whittle down to? What do you expect you will? Like I said, it doesn't really matter to me what I, will, what I come down to. I don't care about the weighing scale. It might, all that matters is about how I look to the judges. Mm -hmm. Because when you're on stage, it's, it's not about, oh, this guy weighs 270, this weighs 280. You know what I mean? Most of the smaller guys beat the bigger guys. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no weighing scale on the stage. It's how you look in the mirror. So if I look good in the mirror, I know I'm doing something right. Of course, I'll weigh myself as well just to see what direction I'm going in. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, the weighing scale doesn't mean much to me. Okay. Because it's a visual sport, not a sport where you have to, you know, go on how much you lift and how much you weigh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And Mark, you're from the Pacific Northwest. 
Uh, you came up in a lot of the shows in that area and then climbed your way up through the, the USA Championships to get your pro card. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about, about how you started lifting, what, what inspired you, and, uh, and how you got where you are now. Yeah, there was um, probably two guys that were instrumental in getting me into weightlifting. My junior high science teacher, John Burkholder, um, I think he won the North American in 74, 76, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Um, he immediately saw me and took me under his wing and you know would, he was a wrestling coach at high school so he would go up there and weight train with them and would bring me along and um, so he was a big inspiration. Uh, People my age would, would recognize him. He was on a couple magazine covers and, and a lot of articles back in that era so. Yeah shorter guy you know I mean I'm 5'6 he's probably 5'2. Um, bought my first weight bench off of him. Um, still good friends with him to this day, uh, really great guy. Um, the other one was my cousin married a, a guy who um, owned a gym up in Alaska and, and competed um, in bodybuilding, came down and competed in the Emerald Cup, which is the biggest uh, MPC contest in the Seattle area, and went to watch him. That was the first contest I ever went to, and um, you know was definitely intrigued. and. Um, the guest poser, which I didn't know what that meant, but it meant a pro was coming in to, to guest pose, and lo and behold, it was Dorian Yates, um, I think six months before he won the Olympia, and he came out, and I was just blown away. Um, my big thing was soccer, but all the glory in the U U.S. is football, so I played football and uh, ruined my ankle, and um, then I couldn't play soccer anymore, so similar to Zach, ended up in the weight room doing some rehab stuff and um, found that I loved, loved the iron more than anything and um, started lifting weights. Uh, 18, competed in my first teenage contest and uh, won the Northwest Natural and was hooked at that point and um, never really had a desire, you know, like, you know, you talk to Jay Cutler and he was like, from the time I was 16, I wanted to be Mr. Olympia. Like, that was... Mm -hmm. That never factored in. I mean, I didn't think I could even turn pro, uh, to be honest. And I just love lifting weights um, mm -hmm. more than competing even. But yeah, 18 to fast forward to 30, um, 12 years of competing in the MPC national levels, got married, had three children, balancing all that. Um, finally won, won the USA in 2004. and. Um, and then I'm am now 38, so I've been competing as a pro for eight years. Um, never would have thought it would have happened, but you know I'm, mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be able to to step on the stage with the best guys in the world. Um, have a more difficult time, obviously, competing against guys you know the size of Zach. Um, but they have the new 212 division, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at at um, doing that. I did the 202 and kind of outgrew that class, mm -hmm. but now they changed it to 212. So that's kind of the direction I guess I'm going now. Okay, that was gonna be my next question. Do you have, do you have anything picked out? What, what, where do you see yourself? What is like your ultimate career goal? Um, I haven't even won a pro show. It sucks, yeah. you know, like, um, you know, I like, I like winning. I don't train for second place. Yeah. And after competing for eight years, it's like, man, why can't I even win a show? Um, so, I mean, that's a goal, but you know, ultimately I, I wanna get back on the Olympia stage. Um, I got fourth place in the 202 Olympian in 2009 and feel like I can be competitive with, with any of the guys in that class. Um, and that's fun, you know, knowing that there's a chance, mm -hmm. you know, to go into the open and try to compete against Phil Heath and guys like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a realist and I know that that's mm -hmm. never a possibility, but in the 212, I feel like it's a possibility. So um, New York Pro, that's mm -hmm. where my sights are set, followed by the Toronto a week later. Um, are, are those two twelve class or open? They're they're both they both have both. Okay. So um, I'm aiming for two twelve. Mm -hmm. um, if I was for some reason two twenty and dead mm -hmm. on, fine, I'll go mm -hmm. do that. You know, I'm not that committed. Um, but you know, you know, knowing my history and, and my body, I think I probably look my best at two twelve. So mm -hmm. that that would be the route that I would most likely go. Okay. Zach, you're, you're kind of known for me, a, a, a very humble guy going into the pros. 
you're you're also a beast. How do you think you're going to stack up against some of the other guys? Like I say, you know, at this moment, I don't really think about the competitors. You know, but I, I think about competing with myself and betting on myself day by day, week by week, year by year, bringing in the best package I can bring. And you know, it's an opinionated sport. So, you know, out of a hundred people in the crowd. 20 could say that like, you're first, 20 others could say somebody else is first, but then it just comes down to the judges mm -hmm. and who they think comes first. So you only can do your best, and if your best isn't good enough, that's the way the cookie crumbles. You know what I mean? I think you know it's one of them sports saying you've got to have a thick skin. And if you don't have a thick skin for it, then it's not the sport for you because uh, emotionally it's draining, physically it's draining. You put your life on hold for you know so many weeks, and you, there's other people involved in the, the, what's it, you know what you're doing as well. You know your family and everybody because because you're going through a certain diet at every team, and you know everybody else wants you to do good, and you know you're not as sociable because you can't go out and eat normal food like normal people because all your food is like has to be hand cooked at home, and so you know what type of nutrients you're putting in. You can't be having. So, you know, certain fats and certain amount of sodium and stuff like this. So, mm -hmm. so you have to be on hands with everything. But you know, like I say, saying about the competitors, I think I could stack well. You know what I mean? It all matters on the given day, who's going to come and bring the A game. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Okay. What would you say? Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're pretty going to say the injuries have been. What is your biggest hurdle that you've had in your career thus far? Yeah, this injury and plus five operations on top of that because the doctors messed you up the first time around. So if they didn't mess you up the first time around, I would have been on stage over a year ago. Okay. So basically, like when they did the operations, uh, I knew there wasn't something right with my legs because I wasn't able to contract them properly and straighten my legs properly. So I went back to get an MRI scan done privately and they told me that basically your tendons have been stretched and elongated. So that's why you're not getting the full contraction. So I uh, went back to the doctor, yeah, cut a piece of my tendon out and attached it to the mm -hmm. knee so I'm able to straighten it more properly. So because they couldn't do both of the operations on both legs at the same time because I needed one good leg to stand on. Mm -hmm. So it was like so eight months after my both of my knee operations, it was like I was in a right knee, got done then Six months later, after that right knee, the left knee got done again, and you know, so it was been like operation on top of operation, and it's now it's only been the first time. Like, I know there's nothing like that coming up. Okay, so the surgeon, the surgeon you had the, for the first operation, he probably had never worked on an athlete with that kind of muscle. So it I, I don't even think it was anything to do with being an athlete or anything. I think it just got to do with the fact that you know mistakes can be made, and mm -hmm. I was unlucky. Because he's one of the top surgeons, so okay. you know, I don't think it's anything to do with being an athlete or anything like that. I just think he didn't realize once a tendon snaps, it's like a rubber band. When, it, when you stretch a rubber band, it stretches out a bit longer than normal, and you know mm -hmm. they had to cut that piece out, and he didn't. So, gotcha. yeah, just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> bad luck comes after bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, um, one of the things that, that I, I like about, uh, about following your career is that you're someone that has, has a very rich life here. You, you, you have your successful business, family's important to you. What, what has been the biggest hurdle? Has it been fitting all those pieces together or are there other things? Yeah, I would say fitting all those pieces together. I mean, um, like Zach said, when you compete, you put a lot of stuff on hold. Um, some guys, when they diet, are, they're they're total jerks. Um, I'm, I'm just quiet. Like my wife says, I'm a ghost. She, girls like lots of touch and hugs and kisses. Same with daughters. And when you're a ghost, that doesn't work. Yeah. So, um, it's been more a, a challenge of balancing. You know, my family has to come before bodybuilding, mm -hmm. and um, and usually when I compete, I'm I'm very focused. And as soon as I'm as soon as that contest is over, I'm immediately. <laughs> It's hard to flip the switch off, so I'm uh -huh. immediately like, okay, what's next? What are we doing next? What's the game uh -huh. plan now? And you know, and sometimes she's just like, time out. Like, yeah. why don't you just act like a normal <laughs> guy for a, a couple months or yeah. whatever? So, um, yeah, I mean, this last year, I really wanted to go 
go back to the Olympia, if I would have done one more contest by that new point scoring system, I probably would have qualified. Mm -hmm. um, but she was like, you know, I need, I need you. <laughs> um, and it worked out good um, because a year ago I met John Meadows right here at this gym. Um, I'd been reading his articles for years and following some of some of his methods with training, and um, it's been good to have a year under my belt, you know, training full bore under his guidance. Okay, excellent. We're uh, this is the first installment. We're gonna be doing three of them. We're gonna talk a little bit about what you do with John. We're gonna talk about what you do with your trainer in the next segment. Thanks.